Yo, what's up there? Dan here, aka The Comic Concierge. And this is one of my graphic thoughts videos. Sure, go through three graphic novels, trades, or mangas and give you my thoughts and opinions about them. No spoilers, but if you're worried at all, check down below for timestamps and chapters. So if you want to skip a book, you'll have that option. Let's get to the books we'll be talking about today. First up, we have Pet Detectives. Our next book is Joe and Ross. And lastly, we have Pepper Page Saves the Universe. You probably noticed that all the books this week are all kids' books, all YA books. And I figured with this being summertime, a lot of schools are ending, you have those classic summer reading lists. I know I did when I was a kid. And often you have the same types of books that are on there. You're trying to find something for your kids to read that maybe that are outside the norm. I picked out three comics to see, like, maybe these are ones that you can add, especially you if you have a kid that is interested in comics and maybe the superheroes aren't doing that for them or they read all the Raina Tagmeyer books like Smile Already. So what else is out there? Uh, there's a lot of, lot of YA comics. Some aren't all that great. Some are good. We'll see where the books this week fall. But let's get to our first book this week, which is Pup, Pup Detectives. And this is a very early age reading book. Like, I think you would probably... Your, you know, your beginning readers, first grade, kindergarten even, anyone that's kind of learning to read. It's a very basic design too, like only a couple panels per page, not many word balloons, uh, and it's really easy to read, especially for people that aren't really used to the comic book format. It's brought down to the basics in a lot of ways. It's a good learning uh, learning the, the the language of comics book. It's uh, really welcoming in that sense. The book itself is about pet detectives. The main character here is Ryder Wol Wolferson, uh, but he ends up getting with other characters along the right way. They kind of form this kind of detective club, you know, think of Babysitter's Club, but instead of them being babysitters, they are detectives trying to solve different cases within the school. It's As, a, as a, someone that has a six-year-old, this is really up there, Allie. It has that type of sense of humor. I, I actually thought that was it was pretty clever. So the opening story is what Ryder Wolferson trying to find out who is stealing all the pencils in the school. You know, some some low stakes stuff, but it makes sense for this for this type of story. You know, they're they're trying to get all the pencils because if they can't take, get the pencils, they can't take the test. And then you do see Ryder Wolferson kind of conflicted it's like he has to do his job but if he gets all the pencils that means they have to take the test as well so is he going to be the bad guy in the end uh, but then he also teams up with another uh detective in this robo groundhog and they kind of go on this different adventure they have different cases she's looking for missing erasers and i did like how they took the tropes you would get with adult crime noir and kitty it in a way that was actually somewhat clever like for example, to spoil it, and not to spoil a book meant for children, but you know, they find out this like underground pencil fighting ring instead of actually, you know, underground fighting where they're breaking pencils and chopping them and using erasers as kind of currency, which I thought was kind of funny. It actually seemed somewhat realistic in a way, something that you could potentially see kids doing in school, like finding ways to use school supplies and you know, creative ways of, of destruction and things like that. So, uh, and that kind of continues. That was just the opening story. There's a number of different stories. The biggest story in here the main story is the lunch bandit and they're trying to determine you know, who he is and, and stop him from stealing all, all the lunches and is there a greater crime than stealing school lunch i i, I think not at, at this day and age but i i did like the way again that approach the characters are here are fun there's a good sense of humor I, I did like you did see these characters fail on occasion they have an attempt to try to capture this guy and he has to get overcome their failures there's a good lessons in here i think for kids to learn and all the characters are very distinct you have like your tech guy as well and um who, who they find out because he is has this volcano that goes awry and he's they're trying to clean up the mess but it's it's an enjoyable read i, I don't know if many people remember this show back in the day called Fillmore that was on abc uh, saturday mornings which kind of that was a higher level that was like probably you know 12 13 taking the kind of nypd blue format but making them hall monitors instead that to me like took it and even made it even lower, like kindergarten level, kindergarten, first, second grade. They tried to determine the reading level, and I do think it's probably like early reading level, like first or second grade or so. I think, you know, maybe an advanced kindergartner would be able to kind of keep up with all this. I do think, though, I've tried to read a, a lot of comics to my, my son who's interested in them, and even some of like the Marvel kid comics are, are difficult to read aloud, just the way that they're designed. This is a perfect like comic to read aloud to your kid. So you have like a, a five-year-old or anything like that, anything younger. This is actually a, a book where I think you can, like, you know, if you have read aloud with your children, it's a good one to choose from. Like I said, it's funny. The art here is really on point. It's the, the cartooning is strong. There's a lot of strong humor. 
and there's good lessons as well. So as kids books go, this is really solid. I thought this was really good. Of course, this is going for a certain audience and it's really hitting it strong. I've read a lot of bad kid books, you know, as any parent has. And I've read a lot of bad kid books on many, many nights, many, many nights in a row. Um, this one is one I'd actually enjoy reading to my kid because I do think it's, like I said, it's funny. It's clever. The characters here are strong. Like, I think you could definitely see this becoming like an animated show really easily. If you have a kid who loves something like Paw Patrol or something like that. Um, it, it's, again, in the sense of like a rescue team, this is like a, a, a detective team. And I think they'd probably, you know, get that collection. Of course, you know, what kid doesn't love talking animals? It's all there. Uh, it, it took a lot of things that make a lot of sense in the sense of taking talking animals and putting them in the school to solve crimes. But those clever touches, I think, made it a, a little bit more than kind of just easy wins. This was actually a, work was put into this to make it a little bit better. Actually, pretty strong cartooning at times. There's, there's this great scene where you see that the lunch bandit change into his actual like take off his costume and you reveal who it is. And I thought that the actual cartooning there was like, wow, that's like, that's really strong. Like, I don't think a kid's really going to appreciate that. But the fact that they're putting that effort in and kind of, you know, it was this great, like, splash page of him moving throughout, kind of adjusting his, his costume bit by bit. It was a really strong storytelling for a book that you think, oh, they're just going to, you know, be shooting fish in a barrel because it's, you know, talking animals. Effort was put into this for sure. So uh, I, I got this from the library, but this is one I could definitely see us picking up and buying and keeping it in our shelves as a book we go back to. And I think there's a set of these and they're continuing it. So if you're looking for something new to get your kid in, I think, you know, this is a really strong one to get, especially if you have your, your five to seven, eight year olds, depending upon your kid. All right, let's get to the next book, which is Joe and Ross. And this is a much, a little higher age range. This is probably middle school level, your classic YA, all ages book. A book I think you could probably read to your kids as well. Again, a lot of six panels are really, you know, very easy to follow. Um, that type of format. The cartooning is pretty good. It, it's what you would expect for the, this type of aimed range, this type of style. The story is about Joe and Russ, and Joe is this elementary level student who is basically being picked on a, a great deal. She lives with her grandmother, and they live in a trailer, and people call her trailer trash. And she's really feeling isolated. She hates going to school. One day, she's, she, she's like walking in the woods. She finds this cat that's been captured in this uh, kind of contraption. She sets it free, and she feels like the cat wants her to follow her. So she follows the cat into this junkyard and she finds that cat actually has a bunch of kittens. And, you know, at that point, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be her having this relationship with this cat and kittens. But no, within that, she runs into Russ, who the family owns the junkyard and they actually strike up this friendship. Uh, you know, and kind of talk, and because he's happy to see the cat back, and he kind of they end up kind of bonding over both the love of the cat, and then they seem to really just kind of get along in, in general. And you know, Joe kind of confides in Ross about the struggles that she's facing because, like, she, she mentioned how she hates school and how she feels like she's always made fun of and everything like that. She feels like she doesn't have a place, so Ross is trying to help her. But what you see is Russ deals with a lot of similar issues. Russ is older. He's in high school. He's actually about to graduate. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, he's telling her things like you kind of just have to kind of put yourself out there, try, try to make friends with these individuals, find, find a group, find your niche. It seems like that advice probably has not worked out really well for him because despite the fact that he's older in high school, he's being in front of a lot too because his family owns a junkyard so the people pick on him for that. He's still dealing with bullies as well. But you just see that he's just trying to, to give her guidance and maybe it's even guidance he doesn't believe in uh, but what he's really concerned about too is the fact that he's graduating and he's worried about college he really wants to go to college he's been ex trying to get accepted and then the also the financial piece as well so you have two different levels of kind of concerns here again kind of your middle school trying to fit in type of concern and then you know your financial concern which you typically get when, when you're a bit older I did like general again the message for this i think kids could really relate to this i think all kids at some point in time have felt isolated within school and felt like they've been picked on or that they don't fit in for whatever reason. And I think certainly there's a lot to relate here in this. I will say though that, that a lot of the narrative threads conclude, I don't think always are the most satisfying. In, in a way, I wonder if that's just because it's trying to be realistic in the sense of, you know, Joe's not going to become friends with everyone. And at the end that everyone kind of sees that, 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 that they were all wrong and Joe was really the best of them all or anything like that. But the, the wins are more small wins. Like just, just finding that one person you can get along with. Uh, I do think though, Russ's conclusion, the way that like he solves his problem, like it made sense, I guess, but it just felt like, not necessarily like compound, but not the most emotionally satisfying way to solve that issue. And 
I do wonder if there's going to be continuations of this book because I can, can kind of see it in a way because the way it ends, not everything's solved and everything's wrapped up. And again, potentially that's kind of life in a way because these are these are kids that are dealing with these issues and, and there's no magic sauce that's going to solve them all. They're going to be dealing with them throughout. And I think that's part of the message as well, right? Where we're seeing Joe dealing with these problems that so is Russ, but you, you, you can still kind of work your way through them. But the people hate you or despise you and make fun of you. It's about those individuals that actually care about you and that you can garner friendships with and focusing on those. When you look at age range, like I said, middle school is probably the best for the people that would enjoy reading this book. Russ is in high school, but I think the way it approaches those high school issues, it's not necessarily geared towards like a high school audience. Like a 16 or 18 year old, I don't think would enjoy reading this unless they kind of enjoy this style uh, per se. It's, it's not necessarily geared towards them. It simplifies those problems a great deal. And it is, I think, some of that simplification that I felt like made some of those narrative conclusions a bit empty at times. Not complete, but I, and in, a, in a way, I guess I'm a little conflicted in how it ended because I felt like it was open and honest with its conclusion. It didn't try to wrap everything up in a little bow. And then at the same time, it doesn't make it feel like a complete story. So give and take, I guess. But like, I do think middle schools would like this. It's not top tier YA stuff, in my opinion, but it's good. It's solid. It, it, it does the job. I think it has a good message generally. And I, I could see it, especially like a lot of middle schoolers, really relating to the story and getting something out of it and getting that like kind of a level of confidence or just feel like they're not alone if they're ever feeling isolated or feeling like that they're being ostracized by their peers you know something like that i feel like we've all gone through in some way shape or form so getting something like this i think could be helpful especially if you have someone that's getting into middle school next year next year like that sixth grader going to seventh grade or whatever it works out you know that's that's a scary transition uh, this might just be helpful just to know that, yeah, that transition can be scary. You, you may go through some problems. It's not going to be easy, but you know, if you can work through it and, and find a way, just know that you're not alone in those struggles. That's what we're going to talk about this week is Pepper Page saves the universe. And again, this is all about Pepper Page. And this is taking kind of the YA story drama that you normally get and meshing it with kind of the superhero world. And I will say artistically, this is probably the best book out of the bunch because what you see is Pepper Page this all takes place in the future, probably, you know, in, in a future that's not super distant, but it, it's clearly a future that's different from now. And Pepper Page is, and, and again, another situation where she's an outsider. She lives in a foster home, which again makes her an outsider. On top of that, she also loves comics and she loves reading physical comics. And this is a time when reading physical things weren't a thing and reading comics necessarily weren't a thing. So she's made fun of, she kind of is in her own world. Like comics are like the, her one bastion. Uh, her one place that she can go to and feel like she can make a difference. It's really what, her safe place I I in a way. And you see her kind of just going through life. Just that's all she's focused on. And because of that, she kind of, a lot of the responsibilities that she has, she, she misses out on them. Um, she's part of this team that she's supposed to be a part of. And she misses the practice. She misses the game, which causes them to lose. Sometimes it's because she's aloof. Sometimes it's because things happen. And you just see like, she's kind of dealing with all this conflict. And when was the last book, she, she feels lost and, she has these things that she has to do, but she really doesn't want to do them. And she just feels like she's a, a big failure. And she, she kind of doesn't feel like she can do what she needs to do. Like all she can focus on are her bad attributes. She, just, she can't focus on any of the good. And it kind of weighs down on her, you know, makes her scared. It makes her frightened. And what you see, though, is that this develops and becomes quickly a science fiction story. Eventually, she decides to kind of face her problems in the process of doing so. They found out a teacher that is at her school is actually a crazy scientist utilizing different techniques found and comic books to create this crazy machine, which brings her into another dimension and kind of gives her superpowers. And I'll kind of end it there because she ends up becoming the thing she idolizes, basically. And you can kind of see it coming. Again, this is not a book that's trying to hide what it is. But I did think artistically, the way it was able to kind of di differentiate the, the comic book style using even kind of the classic lettering um, in, in a way the facade of that with just a general YA style uh, it was, was was pretty solid and you know I did like the progression of Pepper Page and seeing her you know becoming more confident in who she is you know even with these powers that she was having she still again had doubts even and it gets really kind of out there when it goes into these different dimensions uh, it was just to me a good mashing of genre in the sense of 
taking the kind of the YA drama and meshing with science fiction stuff. And you know, there's a lot of stuff here that's clearly admiration for people like Jack Kirby. Uh, a lot of like uh, remarks and art choices were clearly designed and meant to honor him along with other, other comic book artists. So, you know, a lot of YA comics don't necessarily focus in on the why the superhero genre because you know we have so many of them but kids would be able to relate to pepper page not because she feels isolated but because she is such a huge fan of superhero comics which really isn't the case for for kids right now right and why comics aren't really that they're more kind of true to life types of books so would her admiration almost put a wall between the reader i don't necessarily think so because it's not necessarily the most important thing it's just it's part of who she is and i think you learn why she loves them the way she does and by the end of it I think you can kind of understand where the love for superheroes comes from because it does eventually become the very thing, that very thing. So it could be almost a gateway to kids reading this and thinking like, oh, I actually want to read more superhero books where someone that, that I'd want to check out. So a good, I think, entry point into it is the cartooning. I do think the cartooning here is really strong. Like I mentioned, probably the best looking book of anyone I'm talking about this week. The way it differentiates style as it, the way it, it utilizes color, especially when it gets into like her going through different dimensions. It was a pretty Im impressive feat, the way that they were able, able to put it all together. When you look at something like Joan Rush, for example, I do feel like it has that type of style you see a lot with YA comics. This, I think, is one of the more unique ones in, in that realm. And even in the general cartooning is a bit different. That almost has like an animation level style to it. So a really strong storytelling overall. It was probably the thing I was most impressed with. The story itself, like I said, it's fine. It's enjoyable. It's, it's a good read. I do think kids would generally enjoy this and find again admiration for pepper 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 page which is i feel like uh stan lee would be very happy you know seeing another name of alliteration because you know how much she loved alliteration but of all the books i would recommend this week i, I think it definitely depends upon your kid for example you have a younger kid the, the obviously the first book the detective book would be your best bet if you have a kid who enjoys more like your slice of life things that they can relate to on a more general sense you joel and ross if you have a kid who likes the science fiction a type of stories or fantasy stories or is interested in that uh, pepper page would be the one i recommend i think i would generally recommend each one of these books for that age range all the books i probably enjoyed the most was probably pepper page um, mostly because of the art i thought that was really well crafted and that's something that is certainly universal anyways thanks for taking the time to check out my video i know there's a ton of comic book channels out there a ton of youtube channels so any interaction any view any like i truly do appreciate just remember that comics are for everyone the key is finding the right one until next time Keep reading.